So I'm going to show you how we do the ping pong ball and balloon exercise. Um, this was something that I got from an, a fantastic workshop called Stomp Out Boring Childbirth Classes. Uh, if you ever have a chance to attend that workshop, it's fantastic. Um, so first part is we need to get the ping pong ball in the balloon. And um, if you just put it in, if, if you just try and open it a little bit and put the ball in, it's going to get stuck. Um, and as I always said in class, stuck is a word we don't like to have associated with childbirth. So <laughs> what you have to do is get your fingers all the way to the very bottom of the balloon and crank it way open and then poke the ball in. And then you have that. And I would usually have the class do that, um, you know, stuff their own balloon. It was always fun and, and we'd have a good joke about it. And um, so then we've got that ping pong ball in there and we're going to inflate it about halfway. And about, about like that. And then you can let that ping pong ball settle into the neck of the balloon. Sometimes giving the neck a little tug really helps. Um, and then you can let go of it and it'll stay inflated. And I show people how if you just squeeze the side of the balloon like this, not much is happening to the neck of the balloon here and it's not opening very much. These are the Braxton Hicks contractions that are just practice contractions that are more and more common towards the end of pregnancy, um, but they don't do all that much to what's happening to the cervix. So real contractions happen at the top of the, uh, of the uterus. That's where the uh, power of contractions happens. It's the muscle fibers at the top here getting shorter and thicker, which squeeze the top and then pull up on the side of the uterus here. And just like with real contractions, I have everyone just squeeze and then let go and then just squeeze and let go. You just have to do a little bit at a time. And you can see how we're getting that effacement or thinning of the cervix down here. And not much dilation is happening while we're still working on shortening the cervix here. And this is a lot of the work that's going on um, in early labor. It's mostly about that shortening and less about the um, dilation. So uh, once we get to um, much more effaced, much more thin, then we're going to start dilating um, the cervix there. And every, a lot of people get kind of nervous at this point. It's like, oh no, it's, you know, it's, it, it, I, I don't want to push. So we always have a bit of a, a joke. It's just like actual labor where you'd be like, it's okay, just breathe, do it gently. Um, you're stretching beautifully. And, um, and then just, just give it one more push and, and the baby will be here. There you go. <laughs> and it's always just an absolute riot in class. Everybody um, laughs and, and um, ha has a blast with it. And I uh, always tell class, um, uh, take it to your uh, young kids. And, you know, if, they, if, they're, um, if they already have kids and this is a refresher class, show um, your older kids because they think it's kind of funny. That's how babies come out. And um, if you're at a boring office meeting, take it along to that too. So anyway. I'm so glad you're going to become a childbirth educator. That's so thrilling to me. All right. Bye, Charlotte.